Truly, it is uh, our privilege uh, to be in church uh, to worship our, our Lord, His uh, great and mighty name, through the singing of hymns we already touch our hearts. Well, today I'm going to bring this uh, message on love covers. Love covers a multitude of sins. It is a great topic. It is one that is very, very necessary uh, because uh, we are a family. The church is uh, like a family rather than uh, physical, but it is more of spiritual relationship. And you know, wherever man is, there is differences. There would also be a kind of exchange of thoughts, words, and action that may bring a lot of um, pains, perhaps, and joy. But with what we see here is uh, coming together, we have close fellowship that brings joy, meaning, and confidence in God and in one another. However, as we come into uh, closer interactions, there's bound to be misunderstanding and differences. So we have seen this in history, church history, in uh, even our own church. But we must move forward. So how do we broach this subject on solving personal differences in church and also in the family? But we must uh, have the foundation of uh, what love is. Love is not anything, it's not antinomian, means uh, anti-norms, no. It is one that has a standard. So you must see the background of this uh, verse. The Bible doesn't tell us that love cures the sins of others. The Word of God tells us that it covers the sins of others. We must understand what is this cover. And we must learn to apply this for our whole person. So the answer to the differences and misunderstanding uh, is found in Peter chapter 4, verse 8. Above all, keep loving one another earnestly, since love covers a multitude of sins. Let's... Uh, also look at this as an exercise of grace. Grace means uh, receive not with because of our merits, but freely given and receive joyfully. So grace is uh, what we need to exercise. So this is exercise of grace that makes up for a great many other shortcomings in the man. Well, we uh, realize that the context tells us that Christ suffered for our sins. And because of that, we can know the will of God. We see that we now have the, those who don't believe, the non-Christians, especially at the time of Peter, who um, accused uh, Christians of wrong, even though they were innocent and put them in prison, even though they were guiltless. So we still need to trust in God, even though we have been put down, sneered at, criticized, or insulted. So, but God will handle them justly. Not only now, but in the future. So we see Him working through our prayers, and we must believe in that. So even... When undermined by non-Christians, we must never give up. We must exercise love to the highest extent. Not just saying, I like you, or I just uh, forget about it, but not too long, angry again, and bringing back the same old feelings of bitterness, hatred, jealousy, and all the rest. So we come to realize that it's so significant for us. Yeah, so let love cover the many sins of others. It's a challenge for us to understand this, although it sounds easy, it sounds uh, simple enough, 
to say, okay, it's good, nice for the ears, and uh, clear to the mind, but how do you put this in practice? So what we have to note is, first of all, God covers our sins. God covered the sins of David and forgave him of all his iniquities that he showed his repentance in Psalms 32 and 51. So this covering, we call also the imputation of righteousness on him. Blessed is the one whose transgressions is forgiven, whose sin is covered. So he started with this. Then after that, he confessed his wrong and praise God. So we must know that we are, have our sins covered by our God. We may not feel it, but our lives have been blessed. We have His peace. And this may be a sign of His covering that we don't sleep with all the guilty feelings and jump out of the night feeling awfully in, inside us. But this is uh, the blessings of the Lord that He is there to cover us. And we must then respond. We must reciprocate with the love for others. So we see that there are multitudes of sins. Many times when we talk about sins, we make it so general. We say, oh, you are wrong. But what are the wrongs? I just want to be a bit elaborate today by bringing the many, many types of sins, past offenses, iniquities, wrongdoings, breach or likely breach of criminal, civil, company, employment laws, breach of copyright law, or use of unli unlicensed software, and, and, and act, omission, not doing what we should do, or course of conduct that is oppressive, that is improperly discriminatory, is grossly negligent, or constitute gross mismanagement. Well, so we also see violence or threatened voice or violence or, uh, in a workplace, intentional concealing or destroying evidence relating to any of the above. So we, we are in work, we are in employment and all these things we see. And sometimes we are told to do, sometimes we, we uh, implied in, in our doing and sometimes uh, we secretly well, do all this. But we must now look at what the Word of God says. Since we have all these sins, we want God to forgive us. And the Bible tells us when we confess our sins, He is there to impute His righteousness on us and He covers our iniquities. So must have sincere love. Peter's context says this cover is kalupto, sincere love, the agape love. And this love cover, and this cover is a white covering, covering of what is hit, what is offensive. There's height, what is offensive, it is concealed of imperfections, it is to bury what is bad, wrong, and ugly. So this cover is a white range of uh, like a white sheet of cloth covering all the dirt and all the rubbish uh, below it. So how do you do that? Pray for them. By prayer for them, love tries to have them covered by God. And so the instrument of Converting the sinner from his error covers a multitude of sins. We must be prayerful. We must be aware that God is with us. We must also always have this notion that God has covered our sins. And now, in relating to others, in the home, office, everywhere we go, this verse must always remain in us. So, what are the reasons for covering others' shortcomings? Well, first of all, God commands us to love others. Of course, uh, Psalm 103 verse 9 tells us that 
he has uh, forgiven us. He has spoken our sins and our transgressions is uh, removed from us as far as the east is from the west. Then also Christ suffered and covered our sins by his death. So his suffering is uh, one that is uh, tremendously painful and comprehensively um, including all the pains that we go through. And then upon his death, his blood covers our sins. So by his death, we are made righteous. Further, we note that his excellent example is for us to follow how Christ has uh, forgiven all kinds of sins, from woman to even a child, from uh, the, the most uh, criminal person to one that perhaps is so right in his ways. He has forgiven these hypocrites in so many times in the Gospels. So being an instrument of converting the sinner from his error. So we see, we know that we become the vessel of righteousness. And I believe this can bring many to believe in the Lord Jesus. This may be also a way of evangelizing to cover the sins of others. If uh, we talk to someone and we feel this person's uh, way, the way he, he, he looks, the way he acts, you know, he is having a really awful kind of background. One that you can really pick up all the errors, all the mistakes, and in short, all the sins. And when you look at him, you say, you are a sinner. You think uh, he will accept you? You think the next, next line will be accepted? Believe in the Lord Jesus and thou shalt be saved? Well, there are some who truly will listen because they realize how sinful they are. But many will say, don't talk to me. You know, I don't need you to tell me who I am. However, another approach. The person here is a sinner you know. Maybe a very good friend. And there, with love, you extend this love of Christ to the person. The person sees this, this love, this uh, great uh, emotional passion for wanting to win him over to righteousness or something good. Oh, he may open a year to what you have to say. And the next line, Jesus loves you, may sound sweet. But the next thing is, he says, how can I receive this? Oh, yeah, maybe he may reject this, but love covers a multitude of sins. So what we note further is the result for covering others' shortcoming is if we refuse to forgive, God will hold us guilty of our wrongdoing too. So this is what the, after the Lord's Prayer in Matthew chapter 6 uh, informs us. So therefore, it is right for us to cover the sins of others because our sins have been covered by God. If we don't cover one another's sins, we will not be here in the church for too long. It means that if you just carry on to say people are no good and bring out the weaknesses, bring out the shortcomings, then one by one will disappear. There is this uh, idiosyncratic man who was going to find a church. Finally, he found a church. He and his wife went. They were very happy for a few weeks there. But then people started to talk to, to them. And to him, he felt himself to have... Uh, been hurt because the tone of that word hurt him and he stopped going to church as he was uh, thinking of that it was 15 years already he didn't go to church for 15 years means he missed the blessing of worship fellowship and meaning for 15 years 
So it is for someone whom he felt hurt him. So if we are going to have that kind of uh, pointing fingers or saying things uh, that would hurt one another, then we find that you know, the church will get smaller and smaller. But there's one thing that we must know, you must always hold the truth. So how can you tell a person the truth? Ephesians chapter 5 tells us we must speak the truth in love. Speak the truth in love. So we should also, but we must speak it in love. So now, the power of love. Love lessens anger, railings, revilings, contentions, bitterness, hatred, and other negative feelings. It's just being practiced. Oh, I do see our members, our leaders, showing love. But perhaps we can add more to this. Ways that reduce negative impact. Five ways to reduce negative impact is repressing. Maybe there's something that we want to say but we know that it is not good. Maybe you want to say you have a blemish on your forehead. Repress that. Because it doesn't help at all. You know? Concealing. Sometimes we need to conceal. Someone knows that person and uh, is being introduced. And you know the person very well. So a word came that you know that will bring up a lot of dark stories, the background, and make the person embarrassed. Well, love covers all. If you are there, you will say, you know, bring this whole thing to another angle. There's a couple we have known for many years from uh, uh, the States now staying in uh, Thai, uh, Thailand, uh, Taiwan and uh, they, uh, this uh, very outstanding um, uh, lady uh, who works uh, in accreditation of hospitals, she said, you know, sometimes uh, uh, my husband says something and once he says something, he, she cannot stop him from saying. So as uh, she knew that he was coming with something very strong, something that he'll hold on and maybe getting angry and cause uh, the relationship to be sour, he, she said suddenly, hey, hey, there's a bird there, beautiful bird. And then he, he was going, and he said, look, a bird, after he forgets. Diversion, concealing. Well, we know that the Bible, you know, tells us to be wise and show love. But this must be genuine love that Christ died for our sins and also for others. So, in relationship, we need to exercise wise principles and uh, action. And then forgetting, that's the thing. We need to forget our hurts. It's difficult. But how long can a hurt endure if you keep on doing it one year, two years, five years, ten years? But you know that if you don't forget, these things come up, will bring depression, will bring differences. And forgiving. Forgiving is to give away. Give away the hurt. Give away the bad thought. Give away in, in something. So many say, think of Psalm 23. Recite it. Or sing it, or sing the hymns, forgiving, and throw them out of our emotion and mind. We know that we need this because we have too many things to care for. But we have the kingdom of God to live in and for. We have our Lord Jesus Christ to follow, and we have His examples uh, to help us. So therefore, we must know how we can reduce the negative impact. How to cover the faults and mistakes of others? There are three things that we need to do. One is accept others in the spirit of their in spite. Accept others in spite of their weaknesses. Romans chapter 14 tells us those who eat uh, meat 
Well, let him, accept him, those who eat the uh, herb or what you call uh, vegetables or greens, let him or her do that. Accept them as in Christ. Don't try to say you're better because you eat green and those who eat meat may uh, have all kinds of problems and those who eat uh, uh, meat will not say, oh, you're weak because uh, you, you're too green. No. Just accept them in spite of their weaknesses. So it is a challenge. We must learn because of Christ, what He's done for us. He has accepted us in all that we had been. And there, when we know that He loves us and accepts us into His beloved, into His uh, family, and there, the uh, Spirit of God with His people teach us how we can grow in Christ. We must know that if Christ has been one who is critical about us, none can get close to Him. But He accepts us. He accepts this Zacchaeus who was an extortioner of money. He uh, accepted even uh, Simon the Zealot. He was a politician. Uh, he, he even accepted you know, Judas who was a betrayer. But he was there many times saying, you are going to sell me out. He was there to tell Judas. So that was teaching also. So when we meet with these uh, people, we accept them. doesn't mean that, that we accept their sins. But we are there to show the love of Christ and His righteousness. And by the Spirit of God, their wrongdoings will be forgiven and the bad habits will be transformed and also whatever that they are doing wrong will be forgiven. And secondly is quit nitpicking. Uh, I will elaborate this uh, much more and uh, be a peace preserver, be the salt of the earth and the light of the world that renew your relationship with all people daily. So, what we must do is don't make a mountain out of a mold hill. Love covers all these small talks and all this uh, boastful expression. Why do you have to make a mountain out of a mold hill every time we argue? Herod? Why? Do we talk about this person all the time of maybe her spending? And how much? Well, you saw once, and maybe she shared once. How is it always talk about this uh, thing, this last full thing about uh, this person? And make it so big that it spreads. And when gossip takes place in the church, it will bring confusion. It will bring jealousy. And at the end, someone will leave the church. Or maybe a family will leave the church. So, we must not make a mountain out of a mole hill. We must have the wisdom to know. Because our Lord Jesus has taught us His truth. And the Bible study, the groups that we have, the care groups, the cell groups, and all that we have gone through, our seminars. So we know. But somehow our minds, maybe in call the fallen minds, will make something so small to be so big of a person. Why? Because then it makes us feel good. Because many times we want to make our sins smaller uh, compared to the rest. So therefore, we know that if we do that, then how can we face God when we accuse others of all the wrongs? And also the other thing is making a mountain on mole here is the thing you repeat once, twice and three times. We must watch ourselves that we must not repeat a thing more than twice. Sometimes we don't know. But maybe this uh, method is good for you. And you say it again and again. So that is actually just one thing but make it as if it's so important. And sometimes also we forget and then we keep on talking and then the, 
one thing that can be uh, spoken in one minute becomes three minutes. And when in three minutes, 15 minutes, wow. And some say, oh, I'm a good speaker. I can be very persuasive. But this brings a lot of discouragement, feelings. That this person is actually trying to just uh, bring the, the air, the trumpet. So we must know ourselves. We thank God that the Bible is brief. The New Testament is uh, only 27 uh, books uh, in, in the whole Bible. And uh, some are very short, even those that are longer, even in uh, uh, Luke, it, it, it gives the details. It doesn't blow empty airs uh, in the open. Now, the second thing is uh, marriage and small matters. We need to know that the marriage is a lifelong thing. But sometimes things happen because small matters become so big. And also, small matters of the past is made alive every time. And there is a bringing of guilt and the wrongdoings. Small matters. Well, it is uh, what, we, what we see as maybe you must always pick up the rubbish on the floor. You must not uh, spill your soup on the table. And whenever you eat, you must wash. And not only wash, you must scrub all the plates and bowls. And then you, 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 you must uh, flush your toilet. You must put down the you know, cover. And then uh, when you uh, finish uh, your, your bath, you must uh, close the door. And then if someone who is not used to all this, you know, the husband especially, then you know that there is a problem. Every time there is, hey, you didn't close the door. Hey, you didn't switch off the light. Hey, you did not uh, you know, throw this into the, uh, the, the bin. You know, every time you, you, you do it as if it's in, in a zone or in uh, some kind of a playground, you throw all your rubbish and then it's all over the floor. All these are habits. But can this be something that can be covered with love? Where there uh, will be ways of covering this, ways of helping so that the marriage will be one that is meaningful from here to 10 years' time till the time we meet with our Lord Jesus Christ. Many marriages are happy only on the wedding day. But then after that, it go downhill. So there is a, a need to look at what our Lord has taught us and also in the letters of Paul that the husbands must love the wife and the wife must submit to the husband. And small things we need to cover up. So for, for uh, husbands, if uh, the pipe is leaking and then uh, you're asked to do so if you leave it there because you can't do, then there'll be a lot of uh, so-called nagging and uh, complaining. But when you learn something about the uh, making of uh, uh, the taking away of the uh, leaking, you know, uh, do some piping or learn how to uh, do the, the water system or even the electricity so that the love will help you to be maybe a plumber or help you to be an electrician, or help you to be a handyman. How about the singles? Well, the singles uh, in uh, the home. Uh, perhaps uh, it may be the uh, old parent you may not be happy with and uh, uh, because of some of the uh, uh, things that the, the older person is doing. Um, not happy, well, but still have to live together. So we see that there is a need to maybe change the attitude. There was uh, this experience very early in the days of dementia. It was made 20 years ago. So I was in this hardware store and there I was buying something from this lady. There was a call and she picked up it for a while and the mother called. 
and the mother was complaining that she lost a the key. Then she said, oh, you wait, okay, just look around, and uh, uh, later I come back. And when, after she put down five minutes later, she called again. And there she was very pleasant. Oh, just uh, maybe somewhere you go, go and look for it, and you'll find it, and then put on the phone. In the five minutes, uh, there was four calls. And she was as pleasant as the first time I heard. Then after she said, my mother is in dementia. And I have to deal with this. One day, she may call me 20 times, but I still have to do business. So I learned that love, taking all this, meaning that when she called the third time, you can say, why do you call me? You don't call me, you old woman. <laughs> she didn't do that. You know? An old man. But the first time was put down. You try, I'll come back. The fifth time she did the same thing. So the Bible has taught us love covers a multitude of sins. And many, many times we, we fight over the scattered toys on the floor or the wet floor or maybe the ceiling that is uh, stained or maybe the pipes that may not be working so well or perhaps uh, the uh, lateness of a uh, spouse. No. The principle is save battles for the big issues and you will have a happy marriage and family. So we are all in this human situation. Jesus too was in a human situation in Israel, but he gave us the excellent example of patience and love and meekness and humility so we must learn and we must grow in Christ well quit nitpicking and nagging using a magnifying glass checking washing so sometimes the one in the family maybe a single maybe a husband maybe a wife or maybe a son or daughter going around to be inspector uh, to be investigator or private eye, <laughs> and, or to be a teacher. How would you like to live uh, with a judge every day, uh, telling you this is not right, this is not right? You know, and then three years ago you did this, and three years ago you did that, and then <laughs> it's very hard to live. So, quit nitpicking and nagging. Don't set setting wrong. Don't even forget to turn it colder or warmer, sometimes you forget to turn off. Uh, dirty socks. You must throw your dirty socks into the bin for washing or not to put late in the floor or on the floor. And paste, you know, two paste caps. You must close it tight. You must turn it this way. Our little habits make our spouses crazy. Those who are married. Or singles, you make your parents great crazy or make your children crazy. Forgetting to flush the toilet. This this is uh, worse if you your big business is not properly done. Uh, and flush. And some are in habit. Why? Because many of the children today don't do anything at work because either the mother will do the work or the maid or maids will take care of everything you know he wakes up he uh, takes off his uh, pajamas and then puts on his uh, uh, school uniform and then who picks up the pajamas well that the maid will do it or eating will not even touch the uh, plates after the dinner everything will be washed so these children, because of coming from a well, you know, good uh, family, rich family, they don't do a thing. So even the toilets is uh, being helped by the maid. So when they grow up, get married, or even they stay with the parents, they always forget to do that because they've not been trained. So if there is no love, then there will be a big, big squabble and 
quarrel, and one will have to leave the house. But if we have love, and we show examples, and maybe show an example, may not be just a few months, maybe years until the, the person learns. Even our children, until three years old, then they start to take responsibility. So for some older ones, we may have to take that time. Plates and bowls left unwashed. Or oh, the, uh, the, flat, the floor is wet and not uh, dry. Littering at home. Neat picking. Which I believe will help the home to be uh, neat and tidy. But we can, with love, find methods to solve all this. Read books that can and enable the uh, person bad habits to be transformed it may take time but love can help and love will then make uh, our life uh, more meaningful and in the church we need to practice that you want to ask how is it that some of our people have left the church it is because someone said oh you like my good friend and then when I'm away we spend time with the person wow then got angry and then have to do a group. But then after that, they say, I cannot go on. And one leave, two, three, four, leave. Or oh, families. And this is one family that uh, came very happy at first. But then the pastor's prayer was very short and wanting to visit them. But uh, the man said, uh, no, you cannot visit us. And his complaint was, the pastor's prayer was so short. Like, uh, he didn't care. But actually, he cared a lot. So there's misunderstanding. And we must mend these things so that others with all kinds of background can come to church and be able to experience the love of God through us because our sins have been covered by our Lord Jesus' death and resurrection. And because we are not found guilty because He has forgiven us. And he has been transforming us, changing us for the better. So therefore, we must stop being too naggy and uh, nitpicking. And then we must be peace preservers. We need to see how we can have peace with one another. How we can create peace. How we can be the middleman between anger and <coughs> the person. So, be a sort of the earth and the light of the world. So, this is an exercise of grace that will help to overcome many shortcomings of other people. The conclusion, whoever conceals his transgressions, wrongdoings, will not prosper. And so, therefore, what we uh, come to this is the Lord truly covers our sins and therefore we will need to learn how to cover the sins of others. May God help us. So at this time, let's pray in our heart. Lord, your love must grow in me. Lord, your love must help me to overcome and stop judging others. But help me to be able to to have peace with others and be able to work with others, be able to make them feel the love of Christ among us. Let's, in our heart, let's pray. Our precious Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for this teaching from 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 8. It is an enormous verse because it's so great it covers every aspect of our Christian life in treating others. It is one that must feel the love of God in us first that has covered all our multitude of sins. And now, Lord, help us to practice this, to learn to accept the weaknesses of others to quit nitpicking and to be preserver of peace 
Help us so that more will be brought into your kingdom and our family here will grow in numbers. We pray for your blessing to be upon Harold BP Church and each one of us. We pray in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen.